Let's talk about the biggest comeback in sports history. After the coronavirus pandemic canceled months of games, tournaments, and races, athletes are starting to compete again. Major sports had to come back. Being away was getting expensive. Billions and billions of dollars will be lost by sports organizations. So is it all worth the risk? How have athletes been affected? What about the fans? And will sports ever be the same again? The Great Depression, two world wars, hurricanes and wildfires, they've all to some extent derailed the big sports, but nothing like this pandemic. The NBA will be out of action until further notice. Major events have been canceled or postponed for the first time in many years. Right now, every sport is just thinking, how are we gonna get through this with damage limitation? Putting an actual number on the financial hit is hard, but we're talking billions. It's an industry that affects so many others and on a global scale, not just in lost team revenue, but for the stadiums and arenas, the TV rights, tourism, travel, retail, services, betting, and all the rest of it. Now, if we just look at US stadiums alone and the salaries of the people who work there, people like the hot dog sellers, t-shirt vendors, cleaners, and security staff, the pandemic is expected to wipe out about $370 million in people's wages. So the urge for sports to come back is strong. But let's not forget why they were banned in the first place. Remember how bad things got in Italy? For a while there, the town of Bergamo was one of the hardest hit places in Europe. They traced the spread of the virus to a football match in Milan in February between Bergamo's team Atalanta and Valencia, a team from Spain. That day, tens of thousands of fans traveled on buses and trains to the match, where they hugged and celebrated. One doctor called it a biological bomb. Social distancing has to be applied everywhere in the world. Then a sporting event is exactly the opposite of that. And in the early days, a lot of people just didn't take it seriously. This is Rudy Gobert of the Utah Jazz, goofing around with reporters' microphones. A few days later, he tested positive. And not long after that, the NBA shut down. So there were plenty of reasons for suspending play. Nobody wanted to risk spreading the virus to players, spectators, and well, everyone else. And we've seen a number of elite athletes writing about their experience suffering from COVID-19 and its, and its consequences. Once recovered, from the symptoms when they start to train again, severe fatigue and inability to cope with a specific training load. So that meant hitting pause. But if you're an athlete, it's not that simple. Athletes only get a limited number of years at the top of their game. Tiger Woods needs four more majors to break the record for most titles. Serena Williams is 38, but she's still too shy of breaking Margaret Court's record for the singles title. Many of these guys who are at the peak of their physical condition, and they may not be at their peak one year from now or two years from now. Now think about the Olympics for a second. Athletes train for four years, so they peak in time for the games. That's 15,000 of them. But the 2020 Olympics and Paralympics in Tokyo have been postponed for at least a year. That four year cycle, it's designed that you peak at the right time. It's like a finely tuned machine. It is um, super, super difficult to maintain that elite level of uh, fitness and conditioning outside of an elite academy. Athletes have had to get creative. I've just had to adapt by buying um, equipment to basically train at home. Pretty much all athletes across the world who have been in isolation for this whole lockdown would need at least two to three months to get uh, anywhere near back to the condition that they held before. There are lots of unknowns. Will the Olympics even go ahead? And who's going to cover the losses? The International Olympic Committee has offered to chip in with $800 million, but some estimates suggest it could cost Japan as much as $6 billion. Olympians lose out too. They lose out on the biggest stage they'll ever be on. Maybe 1% of all the athletes will manage to get some endorsements that are enough where they can focus on their training 
and uh, still live a decent life. Basically, sitting on the bench costs money. A lot of it. It's why the major sports are risking a comeback. You'd like to think that people were rushing back to sport because they're ever so desperate to make sure the fans have got something and they want to look after all the people involved in the sport. If that's not the reason, it's, it's the business contracts. Contracts with broadcasters are the biggest source of revenue for almost all major sports. The English Premier League have agreed to a three-year contract with broadcasters worth $12 billion. The NBA has a TV deal worth $24 billion over nine years. And each NFL regular season game is worth nearly $24 million in revenue from TV rights alone. So they want their content. And even though that content is coming, not in, enough of it is coming, and compensation is having to be paid. Money's been short all around. But a lot of players have taken pay cuts. But as teams plan their comebacks, the virus hasn't gone away, and there's still no vaccine. What about a situation like the Premier League footballer, Troy Deeney, who didn't want to return to training because of the disproportionate effect that the pandemic has had on the BAME community as a black man and a black athlete? Was he more at risk? In the US, they're trying something new. Men's basketball, the NBA, and soccer, the MLS, are going to be holed up at Disney World in Florida. Teams will live, train, and compete in a sealed off, virus-free bubble. Obviously, they would have to be tested on their way in. They would have to get tested every day. Uh, but there will be a portion of time, and it could be as long as a month or so, where they would not be able to see their wives and kids. It's a lot of disruption. Still, it comes down to choice. And that goes for any future vaccine, too. You can't assume that every single athlete from how many different countries all around the world are going to be happy to accept a vaccine that's been developed in, uh, you know, roughly a year. But as countries have started lifting their lockdowns, sports have said it's game on. It was easy enough for rugby to resume in New Zealand with full contact and full stadiums. They declared themselves virus-free in June. But other sports have returned without their fans, like Korea's K-League or pro baseball in Taiwan, oh, run to shit. He must have where teams played in front of cardboard cutouts and robotic drummers. The Bundesliga is back too. But the empty stands are as weird for the players as they are for the fans. A recent study suggests more than half of sports fans say they won't feel comfortable in large crowds for a while. The big sports are expected to find ways to survive. But it's the smaller sporting communities, the amateur and youth leagues, that might struggle. Clubs will go out of business. People will lose their livelihoods. People won't get to play the sport that they want or deserve to play because the scheme that was in place is no longer in place. And what about women's sports? With money drying up, there's not much to go around. The top women's divisions in England, France and Spain have already been cancelled. We're definitely seeing evidence around the world of less investment into women's sport as money is being redirected to the recovery of men's sport. And we are very fearful that we'll actually see a generational loss in the momentum that we've had. There may be some positive outcomes from all this. To cut costs and the risk of global travel, some tournaments might rethink their schedules. And that would be a good thing for the planet. There might even be conversations about whether they're paying superstar athletes too much money. We've already seen hints from Gianni Infantino, the FIFA president, that he thinks things should change. To talk about salary caps, there would have been mutiny a few months ago. Sports are expected to get back to normal eventually. And plenty of fans will tell you they really need it. And to have these teams back on the field, on the court will be good. It'll do what sports has always done in the past, is allow us for a moment while the game is happening to not think about the real world. Real world concerns about the virus though mean the comeback could be seen as risky business for the athletes and their fans. But at the end of the day, sports is a business. And if anything, the pandemic has exposed just how big of a business 
really is. If there's a story or a topic in the news that you find confusing and you want us to explain, get in touch with us on Twitter or Facebook. Also make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel so you don't miss our next episode.